WCTN WTJR presents Friends of Wild Olive Branch Ministries with Kyle Kopp and David Vance serving the Yeshua. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. And now, today's message. Well, hello, everyone. I'm Kyle Kopp, and I am the friend of the Wild Olive Branch Ministries today. David is currently traveling to see one of his sons, and, and uh, I'm in the studio alone today. It's kind of new for me. Don't know, maybe I've done this once or twice over the now seven years that we've been coming over here to WTJR, working till Jesus returns. Uh, but this is a little uncharted, but that's all right. Listen, I want to thank you for taking the time to tune in today. I believe that the Lord uses us to minister life to you, to bring strength to you through his word and, and, and through some of the wisdom that he shared with us over the years and shared with me. And uh, I, I do. I just want to thank you for tuning in today. And always be mindful and prayerful for the television station here, WTJR. Uh, there's a great group of people here that are working indeed until Jesus returns. And they work hard to bring the gospel and work hard to, to enter in and, and be a part of the lives of people. Um, a while back, I had the privilege of uh, be, being part of Prayer 16, which I think is, was a fabulous thing and continues to be a fabulous thing. Uh, you folks out there need to know that this TV station stands with you in the Lord. And, and uh, what a resource you have. What a blessing. I know uh, David and I both have told you over the years how much of a blessing it is uh, to have Christian television local. Uh, that's just something that we don't have in central Illinois, unfortunately. And not sure why all that is. I, but the Lord, the Lord continues to work on that and we leave that at his feet. But in the meantime, I'd like to go ahead and pray. And let's go before the Father. Father in heaven, I thank you for every person out there that's within the sound of my voice today. I pray for them. I thank you for them. I pray that they would have ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to them. Lord God, we call upon you. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise because we know of ourselves we are nothing. And Lord God, I thank you that you continue to draw us close to you, that you chasten those of us that you love. And I pray, Father God, that we, that we would continue to serve you with our whole hearts, to put you first, to bring glory and honor to your name. Father God, we thank you for the United States of America and the upcoming elections. I thank you, Father God, that you lead us into who to vote for. I thank you, Father God, that your word also says that we are to pray for the leaders of our country. So we lift the leaders of our country up to you. We pray, Father God, that you'd send laborers across their path, that they'd come to know you for real in the, in, in the name and through the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. We also thank you, Father God, for the men and the women in the field, our military. We thank you for their service to this country. We thank you for their service and the fact that they're willing to put themselves in harm's way to protect us and to protect our freedom. There's a lot going on in the world, Lord. And we just thank you again for those folks that are serving this country. Lord, we thank you for the country of Israel. We pray for them. We pray protection around them. We ask, Lord, that you would show yourself strong on their behalf. For we know that they're your people, that they are your chosen people. And we desire more than anything, Lord, to see them blessed and to see them kept and strengthened in every way. Father, again, I thank you for WTJR and all the, all the staff that works here. Bless each of them, Father, in a special way. Bless them. Bless the listening audience. We give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, everybody, uh, I want to take a minute here today before we get into the meat of the message and, and remind you that we will be taking a trip again in December uh, down to the Helping Hands Ministry that uh, Dorothy Navarra is the uh, general missionary overseer of. Uh, we will be taking the shoebox gifts again, uh, probably some blankets and such. Uh, that will happen in the first week of December, thereabouts. And I uh, just wanted to thank all of you that have always contributed, that have always been faithful, that have always, always been willing to bring gifts. And 
you, these gifts are a blessing. I, I have some pictures at home that Dorothy sent me that I have failed to get to, to uh, uh, Donette, and I will get that job done so that you can see some of them from what was delivered last year. But I can assure you that those boxes were anointed and that those boxes are, are taking the love of Jesus Christ to those kids. Many times, those boxes are all they get. I, there's just, it's a very poor country. Uh, their housing has improved uh, thanks to the government because of all the industry that's right on the border. Uh, but I got to tell you, as far as really having much of anything, they don't. And uh, we, we send those boxes with love. And I want to thank you again, each and every one of you, all the churches, all the people that have contributed. And uh, Donette and myself both are feeling challenged to to get this out in front of some other churches here locally in the Quincy area and also uh, back in our part of the world at Farmer City. So kudos to you. Thank you very much. And uh, just wanted to make sure I gave you that, that, that little plug of encouragement and, and remind you that we'll be doing it again. So let's go before the Lord here and let's get, let's get into the Word. I'm going to be preaching first out of uh, Philippians 4. And I'm going to start in the fourth verse, and I'm not exactly sure where I'm going to end, but uh, uh, I want to start here. Oh my, I just flipped my, I just flipped my chapter. Hold on, please. Aha, there we are. Philippians 4, verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Verse 8, Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, Whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace be with you. And I'm going to take a minute and I'm going to stop right there. There's a mouthful of things that we can be doing here, just in, these, just in this small list of scriptures. And uh, the first thing when we started out was rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Uh, I personally, uh, for some time now, have been in a, a, a trial, a storm of my own. And I'm not sure how it ends, to be honest with all of you. But I do know this. I know that God's hand is towards me. And I know he calls us right here to rejoice in him always, to give him praise, to give him glory, to give him honor. He's worthy of praise no matter where you're at in life, no matter what storm's blowing, no matter how bad it seems. We have to choose to praise Him and magnify Him and glorify Him. Thank Him for eternal life. Thank Him for the fact that He is our, our, our El Shaddai, our soon coming King. Thank Him that we are more, more than conquerors in Jesus Christ. These are things that we must, must focus on when, when the times get rough and when the tough gets rough and the rough, tough stuff happens. I'm telling you, everyone, it's, it's paramount for us to learn to rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice and take and sometimes it's a matter of will. You have to choose to do it. You have to choose to praise. You have to choose to bring glory to your heavenly father. But I assure you, when you do it, His peace will come upon you. His Spirit will come upon you. He will bring strength to your weary bones and your weary spirit. He's made that way. He, he is moved by faith. He's not moved by us whimpering and crying and carrying on and feeling sorry for ourselves. He's not going to come down here and coddle us and go, oh, it's okay, honey. That's not our Father. He's moved by faith. He's moved when we know the word and when we know how to speak the word. Those are the things that moves the heart of God. He enjoys our worship and our praise. And we must be mindful that no matter what's happening around us, no matter what's happening around us, we've got to put our hope and our trust and our faith in him. That was quite a sidebar, but, but I'm telling you, it's true. Now let's follow on, follow on down with this here. The next, the next thing he says to us, 
Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Now, there's never been a time that the Lord's been more at hand. He's coming soon. Jesus Christ is about to part the eastern sky. I fervently believe that. It tenures everything I do, every decision I make, because, because I know he's, he's about to arrive. He's about to come back for his church. And I'm telling you, everybody, I'm telling you, it's time for our, gentle, our gentleness to be known to all men. It's time for us to walk kindly and to walk boldly and, and to be encouragers and strengtheners, to, to bring the grace of God to people. We live in a dying, sighing, crying humanity. I'm quoting a very, a very good preacher who's been gone a long time. But we, we have an obligation to do that. And, and here's a perfect example of how we can do it. And, and he said it himself. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Let's go on to six. And this is tough. I have a confession to make. I've always been an emotional person. Now the Lord is training me even now on how not to be moved by every thought, by every emotion, by everything that goes on around me. I'm not to be moved by circumstances and neither are you. Jesus, when he was tempted by Satan, always answered him, it is written, it is written, it is written. And I want to encourage all of you to get to know your Bibles, to get to know what the promises of God are over you and for you. For when those trials come, when those winds blow, when Satan's in your face, you need to be able to say to him, it is written. What's possible with what's impossible with man is possible with God. But it takes training. And I confess to all of you, I've never been as good about that as I should have been. That's changing. The storm that I'm currently enduring, God's not going to take it away from me because I'm the one that sowed it. I'm the one that sowed the bad harvest. I'm reaping the bad harvest from bad seed that I sowed. But I got to tell you, I know he's going to take me through. I know I'm going to come out on the other side, a better believer, someone who's much more trusting of God than he, than he, than he has been. And I want to encourage you. I haven't even started to read the verse. And that's because this one affects me so. Be anxious for nothing. Now that is a strong word, folks. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, there's that word thanksgiving again, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Now that was a mouthful too. It's amazing to me the things that are coming up in my spirit even as I'm here with you today. As he's speaking to me, as the Father's speaking to me. And I pray he's speaking to you because, because there's a lot of Prozac in the world these days. A lot of Adderall in the world these days. And if you don't know what those are, those, those are drugs that, the, that the, the world is giving out to help give people clarity of mind and to calm their anxious spirit. He's telling us here to be anxious for nothing. He's just saying, don't go there. But in everything, everything, by prayer and supplication, but, it, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Now, that doesn't mean we go, oh, boo-hoo, Jesus, boo-hoo, Jesus. What that means is, is we need to be earnest in our prayers. We need to shut off our brains and turn off those anxious thoughts. And we need to let the peace of God flow from the top of our heads to the soles of our feet. And it's a peace that you can't, you can't grasp all on your own. It comes from Him. It's that peace that passes all understanding. And believe me, during this storm, I have, I have, I've been up, I've been up, I've been down. But I have to tell you that I have sensed his spirit, and I have enjoyed his peace. Now, have I enjoyed it at every moment? I haven't. But I'm telling you, that's where I'm headed. There's a new day dawning in the life of Kyle Kopp because, because I, it's time to truly put the old man away. Listen, I got saved 35 years ago, everybody. 35. 
I have served the Lord. I've went to church. I've paid my tithes. I've taken missions trips. I've blessed. I've helped people. But I've never grown spiritually to the, even to begin to the degree that the Lord's called all of us to. Because I've always been too busy for devotions. I've always been too busy to spend enough time in my word. Things that I've encouraged you to do. I've been trying to keep all five fingers or all ten fingers pointing back at myself. But it's not until you get into the storm that you realize that there has to be more. So I'm letting all of you know. And let me finish here as I read. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. That peace, that word, those requests will guard our hearts and minds. Guard our hearts and minds. Guard our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. These are the types of things that we have to put our hearts on, that we have to spend our time doing. It's paramount in the last of the last days because Satan himself is, is destroying families. He's destroying relationships. Most of it because those that are involved and are in those relationships haven't cried out to their heavenly father. Listen, my life has to be first about my relationship with God. Second, my wife. Third, my children. And all the rest of it comes after that. And sometimes when you're a businessman like me, you get lost in the midst of that. You think you're doing what your family needs. You think you're taking care of your wife's needs. Let me tell you, that's not the case. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. But the key is to seek first the kingdom of God. And I want to encourage you to seek first the kingdom of God. Now let's, let's talk about some meditation. Now listen, the world and even preachers get all wrapped up about the word meditate. Listen, they shouldn't. God's telling us we need to meditate. Meditate on his word day and night. And here's some things that, that he gives us to consider for meditation. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there's any virtue and if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do. And the God of peace be with you. Now that last verse is just pertaining to, he's encouraging those folks that what they've seen him do and how they've seen him act would be a good act to follow, quote, quote. But, 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 but previous to that, he's telling us to spend our lives, put our minds on the things that are true, put our minds on the things that are noble, things that are just, that are pure. Now listen, we live in a very distracted world, everybody. And there's a thousand things you can think about. There's a thousand places you can let your mind wander. There's, there's, there's every distraction known to man on this planet right now. You know, I, for example, today, when I came to the studio, usually I bring my phone and I go check it between tapings. The Lord quickened my heart and said, no, don't do that. The Lord said, leave your phone in the truck to me today. Because it's a distraction. There's, there's all kinds of things coming on it. And I, I, I want to have the mind of the Lord when I'm here at the TV station. And, I've, and, I've, and that's one of those areas during this storm that I have, I have let take, take advantage of my mind, as it were. You know, I go and I check my phone between tapings. And, and there's, there's a text from Joe about this culvert being bad. And there's a text from Marty about... Uh, we need to fix this field cultivator. And there's a text from my pastor saying, pray for the Stevenses and all kinds of different distractions. And I'm not saying they're bad things. I don't know that they are bad, but they certainly are distractions and they keep my focus off of the thing that's the most important. I'm here to confess to all of you today that I've, I, I, I've made Jesus Christ once again the top priority in my life. I have fallen away and I haven't done as I should have. And I am thanking him for his grace and his mercy and his love. I'm thanking him for friends that are holding me accountable, that are helping me walk through this trial. I'm not talking about the trial today because the trial is not where the answer is. 
Maybe sometime down the road I'll be able to share about what I've talked about today. I don't know. But I'll tell you this. I'm believing God for his best in my life, my family's life, my church's life, because, because that's, where, that's where the fruit, I, I want to have fruit that remains, everyone. And I want to encourage all of you to have fruit that remains. I want to encourage all of you. If you're in a storm right now, and you don't know what to do, and you don't know which way to turn. I don't know, like I've tried to explain at some level, my storm is an emotional storm. Made some bad choices, and I'm now reaping the harvest of those bad choices. And, and I've, got a, I've got a decision to make with where I'm headed next. And I'm here to encourage you that putting the word in my heart, speaking scriptures, when those thoughts come, and they come, those distractions come and the devil whispers in your ear and says, it's over, it's, it, there's nothing you can do, you know, just, just fold up your camp, walk away. You cannot succumb to that. You have to put the word in your mouth and let that word protrude from your mouth, in your heart and then out of your mouth. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. That's a perfect example when, when something raises its ugly head and, and the world turns upside down on you, okay? I'm encouraging you to ask Jesus to help you. Your Father God loves you. He loves you. He made a way for you where there is no way. I don't care what you've done. I don't care where you've been. I don't care if you're like me, you've been saved 35 years and you feel like you've started completely over. He meets you where you are because he loves you. He loves me. He's making a way for me where there is no way because his heart's towards me and I choose to trust him. I'm asking you to choose to trust your heavenly father, to trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, whom saved you from utter destruction. For those of you that are in the listening audience that are saved and ask Jesus to be your personal Lord and Savior. It takes far more. We've said this over and over and over through the years, David and I have, that being saved is much more than fire insurance. The being saved, you have to take that next step, which is to make the Lord the Lord of your life. I want to encourage you to do that. Not only walk in his salvation but walk in his lordship ask him into every part of your heart listen I've been through a purging process in this storm and there's been a lot of things that I've had to just lay at the feet of Jesus from my stinking thinking thought life to some sins that I should never have gotten involved in there's just a list of things there that I said to the Lord Lord these are yours I want to encourage you that the Lord loves you and that he's waiting for you to surrender. Surrender those things. Confess your sins before the Lord. And he is faithful to forgive you and, and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. That's what the word says. Now the challenge becomes, once you've done that, you, you've, you, you've repented as a believer. You've said no more. The challenge becomes to believe it. The challenge becomes to believe it. And what I mean by that is, is you have to have some quiet confidence and understand that you are forgiven. And don't let the condemnation that comes from the poor choices that you made continue to weigh you down in your spirit. Because I said it earlier, God's, he's not paying attention to whining and, and crying and carrying on. He's moved by faith. Which means that when we've asked him to forgive us, he throws our sins as far as the east is from the west and remembers them no more. I got to tell you, unfortunately, most people, Christians as well, are not able to do that or they've never surrendered it. Which makes it even harder, especially when you're working with someone else with offenses. But that doesn't matter. He has made a way where there is no way. He's looking for your heart. He's looking to help you. He's, he loves you. He loves you. He bore every sickness and every disease upon his back with his stripes. He took all his sin upon his death on the cross. 
He went to hell and took back the keys of sin and death and was raised from the dead. The only living God, by the way, of all the religions of the world, Jesus Christ is the living God. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one passes to the Father but by Him. Listen, everybody. I've been really honest today. I've laid some things out in front of you to consider. I want to suggest to you that no matter where you are in your walk with the Lord, whether it's, whether it's 35 years, 2 minutes, 10 years, it's more than a prayer to save you from heaven, or heaven, save you from hell, forgive me. It is intended for you to spend heaven in eternity with God. But it's also intended for you to have some heaven on earth because you've learned to trust him with the trials, with the sicknesses, with all the things that come our way. You have a choice. You have a choice. And I want to encourage you to choose life. Choose life. What did he say here? What did he say here? I got to go back and find it. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. So please, everybody, take some time to get before the Lord in the next half hour. Get before Him. Surrender, surrender to Him. Turn over all that garbage you keep trying to handle and all that garbage you keep trying to control. Listen, I've been trying to control things in my world at some level for a very long time. And I've realized in, in recent times just how much I don't control a thing. These things really do depend on whether I'm willing to speak faith, believe the Bible, and turn them over to the Lord. Turn over your pain. Turn over your unforgiveness. Turn over your bitterness. Surrender it all at the feet of Jesus. Give it to Him. He said that His burden was easy and His yoke was light. Your burden may be very heavy and you may be overwhelmed right now. But I'm suggesting to you that He loves you. His arms are open wide. He's waiting for you to act. So act. Confess. Forgive. Be forgiven. Walk in your forgiveness. Today's a new day, everybody. We can start new from right now. And I'm right there with you. I've been dying daily for a long time now. And I'm going to continue to die daily and lay it all before Him. Be encouraged, everybody. God loves you. Be kept in every way. Thanks for joining me. This week on WTJR Community Calendar. There'll be a taco salad bar at 4.30 p.m. and a concert at 6 p.m. with the Redemptions on Sunday, July 17th at the First Christian Church, 117 West Washington in Mount Sterling, Illinois. A free will donation will be taken. Churches got talent open to all people of Christian faith who wish to glorify God with their talents. On Sunday, July 17th at 6 p.m. at New Hope Southern Baptist Church, North Side of the Square in Waverly, Illinois. For more information or to set up a time to be a part of the program, call 217-371-7515. And Marcia Sue Mitchell will be in concert at 10 a.m. on Sunday, July 17th at Faith Assembly of God Church, 4000 State Street in Quincy, Illinois. For more information, call 1-217-223-0080. Send your church events two weeks ahead of time to WTJR TV 16.
think 